Okay, um, I needed to go pull this book because it ties into some of my haul. So last, my last video way back when, or it might have been the video before, um, I showed you <clears throat> a quilt that I was working on um, and haven't really made any any progress on it. It's, it's sitting, um, it's sitting there to, <laughs> to be attended to. But the quilt that I showed you before was a Barb and Alma and it was out of this book called Birds of a Feather. And the quilt that I'm making <clears throat> is uh, this colorway, this rendition called Birds on a Wire. And I have that entire kit. kit and I'm, I'm working, on, working on this block right here. So, um, and I will show that again soon because, um, well, I just, I kind of bounce from, from project to project. Um, so this is, uh, applique heavy. Um, it will, it will take a while. Each block is its own little journey. So just like when you're stitching a big sampler, this is a sampler. This is a quilt sampler. Um, you know, each, each, um, little block is a finish. So I'm working on that one. But the other one that, um, I plan on starting really soon. I'm trying to put it in a pile here so it doesn't fall down. And I started collecting fabrics. Um, this is out of another book of theirs called When the Cold Wind Blows. Um, I remember when I was showing this to Lisa, she said that she thought that this was her favorite book. But there's a quilt in here that um, I started collecting fabric for right before I got sick. And it was one of the things that, that came in several months after I ordered it and I was super excited. Um, but the quilt is called Holly and Mistletoe. And this is the quilt. And it's various reds and greens and, and creams. Um, and of course the fabric, because this book came out in, let's see. I don't have my glasses. Oh, 2008. <clears throat> so this book came out in 2008. So the fabric line, uh, which Barbara and Emma used to do, um, fabric lines for Moda. Um, I think it was just for Moda. They might have did some other other companies, but it's it's long gone or it would be really challenging to find all that. So I went searching for uh, a fabric line that I thought would meet those needs. And recently, in the last six months, I guess, um, Kim Deal, uh, another one of my favorite designers, uh, released a uh, a line of reds that fit into my my colorway my decor and they are so so beautiful so these would fall in line with uh, reproduction uh, fabrics uh, this is just a fabric line that I adore that's all reds and I believe this is called Idaho star it's Idaho, there's Idaho and there's star in it, and it's, it's by Kim Deal, and um, there's one green in there, one lonely, oh, maybe two, two, two lonely little greens and browns in there. Everything else is red. I also have an entire bolt of this fabric, not only to use for the background, this is a fat half um, bundle. But um, it's a 108 so that I can use it for backing and, and for piecing. But I will be starting this quilt sometime. It's, let's put it in the plan category. Um, a lot of, these are just piecing. These are, um, these are piece, I would call them modified log cabin um, block. It's really only a center there's probably another name for that block so several of those and then uh, a lot of applique so um haul and plans for that one um let's see let's put this down somewhere where it's not gonna fall over some more haul that i've got recently i am what's the name for a book lover Bibliophile? No, I don't think that's right. If you know what the name is for someone who really, really, really likes books, oh, sorry, this is heavy. Um, let me know what that is so that I can appropriately call myself that. But um, I love books, and I have a large collection of quilting books and em 
embroidery books and books about knitting and crocheting and reference books, um, history books about textiles, that sort of thing. Um, and, and I just adore when other people um, talk about them as well or point me in the direction. Um, Susan Stanley, who is a new floss tuber, um, I'm sure, I sure wish I had met you when, when we both lived in the same state, but I'm sure we'll, our paths will cross soon. She, she lives in the Seattle area, I believe, and I lived in Olympia, which was about an hour, hour south as the crow flies, um, before I moved to Central Oregon. But anywho, um, I have a stack of books that I just bought recently and uh, I'll, I'll share those with you I'm super excited the first one I got uh, this is uh, a reference historical everything but this this is the most wonderful book it's called feed sacks feed sacks of course um, back in the 20s 30s 40s I haven't read it yet so I don't know the exact uh, date history um, when when grain and feed manufacturers and even flour of that sort of thing when commodities commodity manufacturers realized that um, depression and, and post depression era that people were using the the sacking that that the commodities came in uh, for clothing uh, because that's that's what they had um, they started making them in really pretty prints so that's what feed sacks are there's a lot of quilts made out of feed sacks back in the day um, I have some quilts that um, have look like they have feed sack but this is a reference book this is a historical book it has pictures of the um, the feed sacks some of the the prints it has some of the um, advertisements uh, his historical information etc I was telling Lisa when I got this she was here when when my order came in and I said, you almost need to buy two. You need to buy one for your library and then you need to buy one for um, for scrapbooking because <laughs> this is just amazing. I just, I love this. I love this. It's a great book. So I look forward to sitting down. Uh, it says it has 850 patterns. It's the colorful history of frugal fabric feed sacks written by Lindsay Cole McRae. So that's part of my haul. Um, I also got the most recent release from um, Stacy West, which is Buttermilk Basin. It's called Pick of the Crop. And she, of course, does a lot of wool applique. Uh, she has a store that's not far from the Shell Farm, Go Farm Girl. So when we go to visit again, um, you can bet we're going to try to make a little venture out to, to see Stacy. Uh, Lisa and I did a little interview with her during the quilt market. Um, some videos back, uh, she was vending at Quilt Market uh, Trends there at Shanks, E.E. E. Shanks in Portland. And so I think that was the second, third, or third time I got to meet her. She's a wonderful gal. Um, I don't think she ever sleeps. She is like the Energizer Buddy. And um, she just does amazing and just really adorable, um, adorable things. Here's, here's a picture of some of the things that are in her quilt. I really, I like this one that's on the front. I think that is really pretty. And I've got the wool stash to do it. Um, another one that is a recent release is from Kim Deal. I think I have every book that Kim has ever produced. Um, I would really, really love to go take a class with her. If you ever have opportunities, I know it's COVID and I know things are, are just now just starting to open up, but in the future, if you ever have an opportunity to meet or take a class with your favorite teacher or someone you admire, do it. Just just go do it because um, it, it doesn't even matter if, if you know the craft, if you've never done it before, or if, you, if you're a wannabe or you don't think you're at that level or whatever. First of all, you get to meet a lot of amazing people. The teacher obviously but you get to meet a lot of amazing people in the group and there it's, it's just so fun I mean and learning is you know we never stop learning we should never stop learning um, uh, just just do it just do it so back to if Kim deal I'm looking for a Kim deal class I will fly wherever you are Kim um, but this is her latest book 
um, It's Simple Whatnots 2. If I could get one with her and Jill Morton together, because they've done a couple of books together, that would be even better. But um, beautiful, beautiful quilt. Um, I'll just show you the one in the front. That little one that I showed you is a Kim Deal. The, the little kit that I showed you is a Kim Deal. Um, Lisa Bonjean, another one of my favorites. Um, Primitive Gatherings. I got to meet her too at Quilt Market one year. Fabulous lady. Uh, she, I have several of her quilts. I think I showed one that I was working on um, somewhere in my video background. Uh, one of my previous videos. It's a heavily, it's, it's a wool and, and quilt kit and it's heavily stitched. Um, it's, it's a work in progress. Anyway, she published a book for wool needle and thread, um, a couple years ago. And the picture in the front is actually that quilt that I'm working on. And then she just came out with another one. Um, in my humble opinion, she is probably the best resource for wool applique and stitching. Um, so I, I picked this book up and then it, of course it has projects in here as well. Um, but as a resource for, for doing stitches and, you know, a method for doing stitches, I think she's, she's really, really good. Here's, here's an example of some of what's in here. That's uh, a little bit more uh, cottage than her style. Let's see. Let's see if I can find something. Here's, isn't that gorgeous? So, Lisa Bonjean, uh, Wool Needle and Thread 2. That's uh, a new release, and I just got that, um, Primitive Gatherings. And then Pam Buddha. Oh, my goodness. Um, she does a lot of mini quilts. Um, I think the pattern line, or one of the lines that I really like, I think it's called a Stitch in Time. I've got several of them around here. Um, not, not one close at hand. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but I picked up a couple of her books. Um... Uh, vintage treasures so that's a mini quilt that's a good example of one of her mini quilts and uh, vintage patchwork so really excited to go look at these this right here is a bear paw block that is my favorite block i love that block um so lots of patterns in here uh, lots of information about doing small quilts um her along with joe morton um specialize in, in doing the teeny tiny quilts. Actually, so does Lisa Bonjean. I think that's uh, something she's known for. I have a quilt kit that every square, um, I don't remember, I think it's for a queen size quilt, but uh, it's each square is like a square and a square, and I think they're, they're an inch and a half or two inches. Yeah, yeah it's gonna take me forever, but um, that's that's in my whips. One of these days, I will show. I will do a quilt whip parade. Um, it will probably need to be. I know it will need to be at least two videos, maybe even three. Right now, my studio. Um, I, I have two studios. I have a smaller room and a larger. I, I a large room, which is actually like a, a shop that is unfinished that in the next couple years I hope to have finished and that will be my, my big studio. But, um, you know, I got sick right after I moved. I hadn't even made a dent in unpacking and almost everything I have, um, the, the bulk of it, let's just say, is is still in, in boxes and in tubs and it is still all packed away. So, um, where was I going with that chemo brain again? Anyway, um, oh, uh, a lot of my kits are still packed away, so it, it might be a little while. But if you're interested in that, I will, um, I will do a quilt whip parade, which is far larger than my my cross stitch because there's like 35 plus 40 years, 35 40 years of starts and um, finishes and that sort of thing. And, and maybe in between time, I'll do a finished quilt parade or at least a finished top quilt parade. Uh, I've shown some of them over my, my vi different videos, but I've, I've got more. So back to what we were talking about. Um, 
oh, before before I finish in this, I'm going to insert a little clip about uh, what I'm all into right now, and it has to do with my love of books. And it's a little app called Book Buddy, and um, it's going to help me. I hope um, not buy duplicates anymore. So I'm going to insert that right here. One of the things I'm all into right now is an app called Book Buddy. Um, it's for the iPhone or iPad. Um, it's a free app if you uh, only need to log up to 50 titles, but if you need to do more than 50, you can purchase it for $4.99. Um, I have bought it because I have way more than uh, 50 titles, but I'm using it to store all of my quilting books and my um, embroidery and other textile, my wool making textile books. I'm also using it to store a lot of the books that are really just patterns. Um, they don't have an ISBN number, so I have to log them manually, but um, as I'll show you in just a second, if, if the book has an ISBN number, it's really easy to, to uh, log and store these and uh, keep yourself from buying the same title more than once, which I have done. Or if I'm out shopping and I see something and I'm not quite sure if I have it at home, I can look online, this stores it online in the iCloud, or you can store it in a Dropbox, um, and then you can see if you have it um, or not. So I'm gonna show you really quick how it works. Uh, this is kind of awkward here. I'm trying to film this on my iPad while using my iPhone. So let's see how this works. Um, so you open up the, the, uh, the app, and then if I want to add something, I had it already there, I just say plus. And I, it asked me whether I want to do a single barcode or multiple barcodes, or if I want to search for it, I'm going to do a single for this one. I'm going to do Woodland Creatures here by Amy Ray. So I just turn it over and I look for the ISB in number, which is right there. And I say, single barcode, excuse my partially manicured nails here, and I just move it until it finds the barcode, and it tells me it found it, and then it pops it up online, and then I go in and I uh, change a few things. So the genre, um, I have created the list of genre here that works for me, um, and I'm going to say that this is embroidery, and then there's some more options that you can go in and um, I have categories for me I have sorted out my categories of arts and crafts uh, personal books would be just like fiction nonfiction, professional books which might be related to my retired from career <clears throat> uh, you could put in things like textbooks um, I've created one called textile and then you also have the ability to tag things so um, these are totally up to you. You, you create these. Um, these are ones that work for me, uh, things that I might be interested if I'm searching for a book. So in this one in particular, of course, it's still embroidery. Um, some books have more than one thing. So like if you do a blackbird designs, you might have applique and cross stitch and embroidery. And I have some more in here. Needle punch, quilting, rug hooking, um, if it's something that is just a chart or a pattern, um, which is often the case for quilts that are self-published, then I do note that it's a pattern chart. So here, this is really just about embroidery. And so I'm done with my tags and I can save it and I save it. And then here's kind of like a list of things I have. These are sorted by title. I can go back and I can say, um, I want to see all my books and then I go down here and I say I want to sort them by author. So it looks like I have a couple of books by Amy Ray. If I scroll through here, you can see here's uh, all of the books on quilt, quilting patterns that I have from Barb and Alma, Bonnie Sullivan, Carrie Nelson. These will look familiar to those of you who are quilters. Edith, Edith et Sitar, et cetera. So this is just a super duper handy uh, little app. So when I go to buy a book or I see a book out 
um, shopping or thrifting or something, then I can make sure that I don't already have it at home. So that's what I'm all into right now. Okay, I'm back. Uh, did you like that? I think that is a really cool little app. Um, I am just as bad about buying duplicate um, books as I am about buying duplicate quilt patterns as I am about buying duplicate charts. So uh, it was an extremely tiny, tiny, tiny investment uh, cost-wise uh, for the app. It'll be a bit more of an investment um, to populate the app, although it goes rather quickly as you saw in the video when you are, are doing your books. The patterns are gonna take longer. <clears throat> the, the patterns um, I have to manually enter. It's still, you know, it's, it's less than a minute per pattern. Um, and it will be great to have uh, this, something that I can have with me at all times. It's gonna be on my phone or it's on my iPad um, that I can reference, you know, if I'm shopping for something in particular, it has all of the information there. Um, whatever information either that the app calls for and just pulls in automatically for books or the information that I choose to put there for, for my patterns, things that I'm looking for. Um, so I'm super excited about it. And uh, I, I can do another little demo if you like um, about how I enter a, a pattern or a chart. Um, so just let me know down in the comments below if that's something you're interested in. But I'm looking forward to having that done and, and I'm just gonna as I unpack things as I buy new things the first thing I do like when I, I got the stack of books the first thing I did is I whipped out my phone and within a few minutes I had them all entered in in my um, my little database so that's what I'm all into super excited about that so we're down on the home stretch I have just a few more things to show you from haul and I think I think we're almost there. So, um, one of the things when we went to the Little Red Hen, oh, that, that quilt shop is fantabulous. I have to say, my favorite quilt shop of all time has, has closed, and that was called the Wild Rose, and it was in Oregon, Washington. It closed many, many years ago. Uh, in fact, um, some of the, the retreat beds that I have here, I purchased from them when they closed. They were a tiny, cute little quilt shop. They had a upstairs um, retreat center. Um, it was very picturesque uh, when you went outside. Tiny, cute little western town, western slash farming community town, and um, very close to Mount Rainier, so they had a beautiful view. But um, they're close. I have to say that right now, the Little Red Hen is probably my favorite quilt shop of all time. And it's, it's big. It has tons of fabric. Um, it had a lot of um, older fabric lines, um, which is a great thing f for me. You know, when you're looking for, you know, three or four fabric lines ago from Joe Morton or this one I'm going to show you, which is a collection for the cause. It's in the Mill Book series. Um, they had a lot of pre-cuts. They had a lot of patterns, they had a lot of samples, they had wonderful, wonderful ladies who staffed it, who were knowledgeable, and if you asked a question, they knew exactly where to, to take you in the very big store. It looks very unassuming on the outside, it's cute, and um, but when you get inside, it's like, oh boy, oh my gosh. So, we went there when we were uh, a week, two weeks ago, um, was a day trip. Um, when we were there for to, to go to Amana, we stayed with Michelle, farm girl, for a couple days before the retreat, and um, that was one of our day trips. So all of that to say, one of the things I found there was a layer cake um, for the collection of the cause, uh, which is the um, Howard Marcus, um, and this one was the Mill Book series, and these are Lori colors. Um, let's see. Let's see if I can flip through that. If you can see the reds, the browns, the burgundies, the greens. I love this. And what I bought this for is a quilt um, that I've made several of. And it's called a Disappearing Nine Patch. So with all of our um, budding quilt makers, that is one that is really easy to do. Um, you can find 
a lot of tutorials online to make it. Um, if you can't find something, you have questions, please feel free to reach out and contact me and I, I can walk you through it. Super duper easy. Um, it's a great quilt to make if you're making a quilt for a gift. It's also a great quilt that if you have a line of fabric where you really want to see the fabric and it's great for pre-cuts. I've made them both with layer cakes and with charm squares and I'm going to show you one today um, that I made with a layer cake. It's right behind me. This was um, a fabric line. Oh gosh, Holly. I can't remember her name. Holly Taylor? Is that right? I'm not sure. Anyway, it's a camping fabric line and it's it was beautiful and sometimes you just hate to cut into you know the fabric because it's so pretty so here as I said it was camping related here it had really pretty let me get it out here I have no idea what I'm showing you but basically this is what a disappearing nine patch looks like made with a layer cake and this is one layer cake. It makes um, a, a fairly nice size lap quilt. Um, I have this on my couch. It's just big enough to um, uh, to put over me. Uh, I'm not very tall, so if you're taller, you might need to add some borders around it. Um, but one layer cake will make a throw. And you can make it in an afternoon, or at least you can piece it in an afternoon. Um, and, uh, it just, it just goes together really quick. You, you know, if you're not a quilter, you can tie it, you can do straight stitching, however you want to do it. But, um, that's what I got this for because I needed another quilt. I was getting kind of tired of this one being on the couch. Um, and, and I'm going to make this into a couch lap quilt. So that was what part of my haul from the little red quilt. Long story longer. And then the last one I want to show you is um, a bunch of fabric that I collected over a couple of trips to uh, a local quilt store in Bend, Oregon. It's called the Quilt Basket. Um, I love that store. There's two stores. I love them both uh, for different reasons. But the Quilt Basket, um, one of the reasons I really like them is they have a really great sale wall sale fabric wall and they they don't put you know the stuff that nobody wants to buy they I think they probably swap it out and and stock it with you know something that might have uh, that has been there for you know whatever prescribed length of time anyway it started out with this fat quarter bundle um I don't recall let me look I bet I can find out really quick here hold it please Yes, so this is a Henry Glass fabric line. It's Kim Deal, <laughs> of course. Um, and this was a fat quarter bundle, and I got this in the sale for $23. Yes, that's very, there's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 12. There's 12 fat quarters in there and it's all from one line and then they had yard age too so i don't remember who it was it was probably it was either shanda or it was um olivia from pumpkin hollow quilts or it was christy cross hash quilts one of them had a quilt um either behind them or in their opening scenes or somewhere um, of a nine patch made with, I would call it, um, reproduction fabrics or primitive fabrics. And I just adored it and had black, black background. So uh, I, I need to make two of those for my, uh, my prim room. And so let me just show you, I have to show you to you in, in bundles. So this Oops. This is uh, one of the bundles. This is part of the bundle. These I bought at Little Red Hen. Uh, not necessarily the same line, but they're gonna go with it. 
And then this is the rest of the bundle of what I purchased with this black being the black, the, um, the off square. So there will be a nine patch and then there will be an off square with, with black. And I need to collect a couple more blacks, but basically um, this is enough for a couple of twin quilts plus some, of course, you know, you need extra cause you do. Um, so that's going to be in the works. Um, those should go together pretty quickly. They're going to be nine patches. They'll be set on point, uh, probably with, um, a narrow border and a wide border. And, um, that's part of my haul. And those were all off the sale rack and their sale rack runs, I think it's $7 a yard, which is really, really good. Okay. So we're at the end of, um, this segment. I do have another segment that I'm going to attach to the end of this video and it's a follow-up from my video um, the many many moons ago before I got sick um, talking about my linen closet so um, it was I did kind of a sneak peek but I really didn't go into um, my linen closet and the linen closet is talking about how I store my linens how I've started storing my linens and it also gives um, kind of a panoramic view of this room. So uh, I literally uh, was in the, the middle of painting and remodeling, not remodeling, painting and redecorating this room uh, when I got sick. I had actually finished the painting um, except for the closet, <laughs> um, but I hadn't really finished putting this room together. So the video shows this room. It's one of my retreat rooms. I call it my prim room. Um, so it'll show the room. It will show my linen closet and uh, kind of how I store my linens and how I store my DMC and my other floss. And uh, I, I'm in that room right now. Um, I've got my one of my cabinets behind me. And I've got a little um, tiered, <laughs> this is a different kind of tiered, um, display. Uh, this holds like my Valdani and, and a bunch of odds and ends. I don't know that it's going to stay in this room, but it's, it's here right now. So I'm going to show that uh, if you're interested in how I store my linens and my wools and my thread, that will be tacked on to the end. And until next time, uh, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Um, Thank you for returning if you're a returning subscriber. Um, you can find me um, on Instagram under TechStylist, the same spelling um, as my YouTube account. And you can also find me on Facebook at McClary Mercantile and Quilting. Um, right now it just shows uh, a lot of my, my stitching journey uh, once I kind of get back up and, and um, running. Uh, it will probably show my my quilting uh, with my quilting machine. Um, I recently have had a, a really large number of people reach out and, and send me firm requests on Facebook to my personal account, and I'm redirecting them to my McClary Mercantile. That's where you're going to find all of my uh, quilting, stitching, all of, all of that stuff. But the, the account with my name on it, um, that's, that's my personal family account. So if, if you reach out and you request me and I redirect you, please, please don't be offended. Um, I want to connect with all of you, but, um, I'm trying to just kind of separate out those, those two accounts and, um, redirect folks. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for hanging out with me. I am really, really happy to to be back. I, I don't know how often I will make these videos. Um, I know this was a long one. Um, probably the next two or three might be long as well, but uh, that's okay because, you know, YouTube, Stitchy Tube, Floss Tube, Quilty Tube, um, it's all good. So thank you again and take care and I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. So this is the prim decorated um, room, retreat room, where I'm keeping all my cross stitch. Up here um, is where I have the DMC and some of my other fancy floss like weeks and classic color works and stuff. A couple 
um, retreat boxes, some of my Morgan hoops, and then some Billy Jacobs prints that I picked up in Amana, and one that Michelle Farm Girl gave me. And that's some more hoops. And then down here is the piece that Lisa and I found when at antiquing one day in um, Redmond. And on top I have my miniature Singer um, sewing machine, which is a Centennial one. And in the drawers here, you can get it open one-handed. I have a lot of my um, wool patterns. And then down here, I've got lots of wool. Some of my wool kits. And then more wool in here. And then um, these are actually two twin beds pushed together, which I keep it that way when I'm not having retreats so that I have easier access to the closet. Over here, I have some more floss. I have my Victoria Model Arts and my silks. And a lot of my floss is actually kitted up in bags. Uh, I've got stacks of quilts here. Over here is my little cabinet that I got with uh, all sorts of accoutrement in here. And doodads. This is my Lisa Kindred Stitcher Mamie made me do a cubby and uh, I love collecting uh, antique spice racks, spice boxes. So I'm going to swing you back around. Oh, there's the front yard. Swing you back around here. This over here is a piece that I picked up um, through a, a Save the Stitches Facebook group which is local here in the Central Oregon area so when people find them out thrifting or uh, shopping they post it on there and if someone's interested in it they can go get it and then over here we're gonna go back and we're gonna take a look at my linen closet so uh, I have started keeping my linen on hangers. I really, really like this method. Um, I have them separated out by uh, dyer and by count. And I'm gonna pause here, I'm gonna grab a couple down and show you what it looks like. So here I have my stacked rack of 36 count. Um, I have it mostly separated out by um, like lakeside linen here, um, I don't remember what this one is, and then there's like Picture This Plus, and then there's some miscellaneous like Dixie Sampler and Exude Signs. What I love about this, number one, is that I can stack these hangers, so they have a hook and you can do it. So this whole, whole bunch of linen, and I'd say there's probably, probably 30 or more pieces of linen here, maybe more than that, that if I'm looking for a particular linen, or all of them, I can just pull this out and I just start flipping through and looking for the linen that I want. I just love, love, love this method. It has worked out so well. Um, I did start ironing them. I haven't ironed all of them. It's, it's a chore. <laughs> well, actually it's not a chore, it's actually kind of fun, but. Uh, so this is how I store my linen and um, Again, it's, it's very handy. You just kind of put it all on there. And that 30 plus pieces of linen takes up about an inch of room. And then here, I don't have it all put up here yet, but here I have like all my 40 count picture this plus. And I have a whole thing of weeks. And here's some halves. And it's just, it's nice. So all of my linen fits in about, let's see, let's scoot it all together. All of my linen 
fits in about 12 inches of space. Um, and that's a lot of linen. I have quite a bit. I've also started keeping some of my samplers that I'm working on uh, on these hangers. These hangers are really nice. And so even though I have a project bag, when I'm done with the sampler, uh, if I'm switching out, I just, I usually press it and then I attach it with the, um, with the bag and the floss in the bag and I just hang it up and again, um, I have several of them hung together. I don't do this for all my pieces, but for all of my big samplers, um, I have taken to storing them this way. And again, it works out rather nicely uh, when I'm ready to go back to stitch on something. I can grab it, it's pressed, it's ready to go. It's not all wrinkly, you know, and folded up in the bag. And I'm really liking this process. I don't feel like I need to press everything all at once, you know, to kind of get it here. I'm just kind of doing it as I go, as I pick them up. Um, again, takes up very little room. This is a closet in, in one of my spare bedrooms and it's working out really, really well. Uh, down here, I have some utility carts with more projects. Uh, this over here, you can't really tell, but there's extra bags there and all of my fabric that I buy on the bolt for dyeing is back here. And then kind of over here in the closet, um, I keep my, it's gonna darken here, Woo! I keep my frames and then there's another utility cart. Up here in the top of the closet right now, I have some miscellaneous wool projects. I have a box where all of my findings and charms and stuff like that for project bags and to make fobs is up there. I have all of my silk threads. Uh, those are not silk threads that are for cross stitching. Those are silk threads that are for applique. They're 100 weight fine threads. And then I have a lot of miscellaneous cross stitch paraphernalia doodads. Over here is my box of DMC that I haven't put on rings yet. And then there's a couple of wool projects in there. And then my silhouette and a uh, large cutter in there. There we go, much better picture. So the other utility cart has a bunch of project bags that are cut out, ready to be sewn. Uh, a lot of my trim and velvet and then a piece of velvet that I'm going to over dye and a bunch of the spare hangers. I'll put a link down below uh, to the hangers that I ordered. They're off of Amazon. Um, they were like 15 or 20 for $25. It, not very expensive at all, at least in my opinion, um, for what you're getting. And then there's a bunch more um, projects that are hung up. Yes. I have a lot of whips, those are all whips. And then, oh, this is my um, Mrs. Saltbox, Mr. Saltbox Stitcher, um, the set that he made for me. I think I got the very first set that he made, uh, aside from what he did for Carol, of course. But those are proudly displayed here. And that's all of my stitching room.